Hello everyone! Welcome to my channel. I'm Ofelia Orate, a principal owner of a school and tutorial center, a math teacher, and an author of 21 books. My most recent books are the following. College Entrance Reviewer Books 1 and 2, Core Concepts Reviewer for any high school, especially Science High School, PSHS Reviewer Volume 3 and 4. You can buy them online at Lazada and Shopee. My channel is about math tutorials which can help you with your entrance exams, SAT, and ordinary math class lessons. Please subscribe and click the bell button. Let's start! What is the difference between 60% of 240 and 20% of 50? Okay, so you get 60% of 240, that is simply 240 times 0.6. Remember, 60% is just 60 per 100 or 60, move the decimal point two places to the left, 0.6. So it's easier here. So 0, 6 times 4 is 24, carry 2, 6 times 2, 12 plus 2. 14 one decimal place 1.1 1 .1 point so we have 144 next we get 20 percent of 500 so that is 500 times 0.2 why 0.2 20 percent means 20 per hundred which is 20 per hundred so you move the decimal point two places to the left Ignore the zero, you just write there point 0.2. There, so it will be faster. So zero times two is zero, zero times two is zero, five times two is ten. One point, one point. So we have here 100. And then subtract them because you are getting the difference. The difference is the answer in subtraction. So 144 minus 100 here will give us 44. Final answer is 44. So the answer is letter B. Next, problem number two. Geometry problem about circles. A cord is 6 cm centimeters away from the center of the circle. Okay, let me draw that. Oh, if we have a circle here, a cord. So for example, this is my cord is six centimeters away from the center this is the center this is six repeat this is the cord it is six cm away from the center of the circle there next the radius of the circle is 10 cm so we can there Locate the radius here. This is also radius. That's radius, radius, radius. But it's better here. So it is 10 cm. How long is the cord? So how long is this cord? There. So we can solve for this first. For this. Right? We can let this, let, let's say, BC. Oh, what did you notice? Did you notice that this is a right angle by a theorem in geometry? From the center to the cord, it will always be perpendicular to the cord. And it bisects the cord. So if this is C, this is also C. There. So you can see that you can now use Pythagorean theorem. So 10 squared is equal to C squared plus 6 squared. Pythagorean theorem. So this is 100 equals c squared plus 36 then transpose 36 to the other side you have c squared 100 minus 36 oh, borrow 1 10 minus 6 4 9 minus 3 64 equals c squared take the square root of both sides you get c is plus or minus 8 but negative 8 cannot be the length of a line segment so you only take positive 8 to be c 8 cm in other words so we have here letter a now problem number three 
what is the area of the shaded part of the given figure? Ah, here, this. Okay. Oh, so the area of the shaded part here, this one, is equal to the area of the square, this square. How did I, I know that it is a square in the first place? Look at this. This is 2, so this will also be 2. And 1, 2, so this will be 2. 2, 2, 2, 2, so you have a square. Square minus the area of the sector. This. This is the sector. There. So, the area of a square is 2 square or 4 minus... How do we get the area of a sector? Area of a sector, remember, is A, or the measurement of the angle, over 360 times the area of the circle, pi r squared. So here, the area of the sector is 90 A, the angle, over 360 times pi, pi, R, your R is simply this, isn't it? So this is 2, your R is 2. R squared, R squared or 2 squared which is 4. Now this is over 1, this is over 1. So you simply have here, this cancels with that. That will be 90 divided by 90 is 1. 360 divided by 90 is 4. But this 4, again, cancels with 2 squared, which is 4. So you're left with 4 minus 1 times pi over 1, pi. 4 minus pi. Oh, there. Letter B. Problem number 4. I to the 40 raised to the 5th is equal to... Now, i to the 40 will definitely be equal to 1. Now, let's recall. Let's recall your complex numbers or imaginary numbers so that you will understand why this is equal to 1. i to the 1 is i. i squared is i times i. Remember, i here is the square root of negative 1. So, i squared is simply negative 1. Why? Square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is negative 1. i cube. Oh. i cube is i squared times i. i squared is negative 1 times i. So, this is negative i. And i to the fourth is i squared times i squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 there. So i to the 4th is positive 1. If you continue, you will see that there's a pattern. If you continue, let's say i to the 5th is just i to the 4th times i. This is i to the 4th is 1 times i is simply i. You go back there, i. i to the 6th is i to the 4th times i squared is 1 times i squared i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 1. i to the 7 is i to the 4th times i cube. So that's 1 times i cube is negative i. They are negative i, so you get negative i. i to the 8th is i to the 4th times i to the 4th. i to the 4th is 1 times 1, so you get 1. There. So you see that there is a pattern. I negative 1, negative I 1. I negative 1, negative I 1. So if you are given I to the 40, this is 40 divided by 4, right? You will have no denominator, so it is definitely equal to 1. Or, or it is simply, or you can take it like this. Let's say you don't understand me in that way. I to the 4, raised to the 10, oh. 
i to the fourth is one raised to the ten that will still be one ayan now so i to the since i to the fourth e is one it is raised to the fifth diba so you raise that to the fifth you still get a one so the final answer is one now what if i ask you to solve for i to the 42 times i to the 16 very simple use the laws of exponents so i to the 42 plus 60 that is 102 isn't it oh and then divide 102 by 4 why? Because there's a pattern. The number repeats after the fourth time you multiply i. Now, when you're dividing by 4, the last two digits must be divisible by 4. Another shortcut. But 2 here is the remainder, right? Because 100 divided by 4 is 25. So you will have a remainder of 2. I'll show you. 2 times 4, 8. 22 divided by 4, 5. 5 times 4 is 20. See, you have a remainder 2. Remainder. Mm. So if there's a remainder 2, you count 1, 2. The answer is negative 1. Oh, let's say, let's say your remainder is 1, your answer is I. When you have a remainder of 2, your answer is negative 1. This one will give you a remainder of 3. And 1 will give you no remainder. Exactly divisible by 4. Ganon. Okay? So, let's say you have here, I to the 2,507. Oh. You just take the last two digits. Because of divisibility by 4. A number is divisible by 4 if the last two digits are divisible by 4. Oh. Take the last two digits. 7 divided by 4. 1. Or remainder 3 or remainder 3 remainder 1 remainder 2 remainder 3 so your answer is negative i there next problem number 5 given x squared plus 6x plus 9 all over x squared plus 8x plus 15 what is the value of x so that the given expression is equal to 2 it would be better here for you to factor to make things really fast because if you don't, you are going to have a quadratic equation, which is a little complicated. There, like this. There. This is factorable, right? So the factors are factors of 9, which when added will give you a 6, will be 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay. Now, what are the factors of 15, which when added will give you 8? 15 and 1, no. It will give you 16, which when added, 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay. So, what do you notice now? Yes. These two are cancelable. See? You make the equation really simple. So you're left with x plus 3 all over x plus 5 is equal to 2. This is over 1. Then you cross multiply. This is x plus 3 times 1 is x plus 3 equals 2 times the quantity x plus 5. Simplify it. So you get x plus 3 equals 2x plus 10. Solve for x. Transpose x here. There, transpose x to the other side. Copy 3, transpose 10. Oh, when you transpose, remember, you change the sign, right? x becomes negative x, plus 10 becomes negative 10. So, x is equal to negative 7. There, negative 7. Is it in the domain? Yes, it's acceptable in the domain. Therefore, x is equal to negative 7. What if, let us say, you solve... And then you got a negative 3 and a negative 5. No, they are they will be extraneous roots because 
When x is negative 3, the denominator becomes 0. Divisibility by 0 is undefined. That's what I mean by talking about domain. Next, problem number 6. This problem really appeared in an upcut and my uh, students from Philippine Science High School way back asked me after the upcut, Mom, there was a problem in the upcut which really we cannot solve. Okay, show me. Ganyan. And then we, we analyzed and then this is what we got. Try it first. What do you think is the next number? It took us around five minutes trying to see which is the correct answer. So I'm giving you also a little time. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, what's your answer? Okay. The correct answer is letter C. Why letter C? Look at this. This is funny. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, all of us really laughed when we got the correct answer. This is it. Do you see that this is 1 and the reverse of 1? What do you see here? Do you see that you have a 2 and the reverse of 2? What do you think is this? So you have a 3 and the reverse of 3. So this is <laughs> uh, 4 and the reverse of 4. So what must this be? 5 and the reverse of 5. Of course, uh, the printing <laughs> or the typing is not very good, but that it is. Before we end, always remember to add kindness, subtract judgments, multiply understanding equals Mrs. O's Good Life Equation. Please subscribe and click the bell button. Thank you.